So the ones, the uh, people with schizophrenia, right? They're the ones with multiple personalities, right? It's time to stop. It's time to stop, okay? No more. Where the f are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services. It's time to stop. Hi Gabos, welcome or welcome back to our channel. My name is Alex. I am an alter in the Goblin system. We have dissociative identity disorder and we share our lives with you so you can see what it's like to live with this disorder. But first things first, it is hat time. Let us don our beanies of understanding so we can jump right into this topic. So let's get going. Everybody seems to be confused with the difference between schizophrenia and dissociative identity disorder, formerly known as multiple personality disorder. That's what we're gonna be going over today. I do have my notes. I'm gonna be looking at my notes. I really try hard not to because it looks better when I'm looking at the camera, but there's a lot of information. And you know what? It's just easier this way, so I'm sorry. <laughs> so let's get into the video. Let's really define what schizophrenia is because the term gets thrown around a lot but I don't think a lot of people understand what schizophrenia is. Schizophrenia is a mental disorder that interrupts how a person interprets reality. The person with this disorder requires lifelong treatment. So when we first got diagnosed, when Julie was first sick, everybody thought that she had schizophrenia. Turns out we have bipolar one, or maybe possibly schizoaffective, but we'll get to those in a different video. Um, so the main issue is people with this disorder deal with something called psychosis. And Julie is well versed with psychosis. She has had quite a bit of it. So what is psychosis? What are some of the symptoms? All right, so with schizophrenia, there are positive and negative symptoms. That doesn't mean these are good symptoms and these are bad symptoms. It just means these are symptoms that are adding to somebody's reality or detracting from somebody's reality. That's the easiest way to understand it. It's not quite exactly what it means, but in those terms that's the easiest way to understand it. So what are some of the positive symptoms? We have delusions, false beliefs that they believe are true. We've had these and it is impossible for somebody dealing with psychosis to not break out of a delusion. It's just really hard for them to get out of a delusion. So for instance, you can see the sky's blue, but if I'm having a delusion where I think it's red, even if I look at it, I'm not gonna believe you. I am not gonna believe you. So these are delusions. And uh, that term gets thrown around quite a bit. Uh, you're being delusional. It is a clinical term, so let's try to use it in the clinical sense. Alright, what's next? Hallucinations! Hallucinations make up the main part of this disorder, I feel like. Um, and they can be more than just visual hallucinations, which is probably what you're used to when you hear the word hallucination. They can be sight, taste, touch, smell, and auditory. So auditory hallucinations are hearing voices, which is what people commonly associate schizophrenia with. So we have experienced all of those types of hallucinations. Um, the olfactor and tactile hallucinations, so um, the smell, the taste, and the touch hallucinations are rare, but when they do happen, they're very uncomfortable. Um, the touch hallucinations, you could think that you have, a, you know, trigger warning, parasites. Tactile hallucinations, you could think that you're having parasites crawling in you. I mean, it's really, really uncomfortable for anybody experiencing it. Disorganized thoughts. And this sounds simple, but it's not. When Julie had disorganized thoughts when she was first dealing with her illness, 
it was like somebody took up six sentences, chopped them into bits, and then shook them all up, and then just threw them together. And that's what she was thinking. Like, an example would be like, how, car, for, why, to, w, x. Like, the thought pattern didn't make any sense as she was trying to, like, think. And it was just jarring and impossible to decipher what she was thinking. It, it's very, very disorganized thinking. <laughs> This organized motor skills, so with schizophrenia you can have catatonic states. These are states where people can't move, they can't, you know, do certain things. They can become catatonic. We've only had a few episodes of having a catatonic moment, so we're pretty fortunate there. So what are some of the negative symptoms? So you see how we went over the positive symptoms and they are something that adds to your reality. Now let's go over the negative symptoms, something that detracts from your reality. Symptoms could include neglecting hygiene, lack of emotion, lack of interest in everyday activities, lack of ability to feel pleasure. So these are detracting from your normal everyday life. And this is what schizophrenia is. It's a lifelong disorder. How do you treat it? Um, medication, certain types of therapy, mainly medication. Antipsychotics and anti-seizure medication really works with schizophrenia. Um, it is a lifelong disorder and it is chronic, meaning you will not get better, unfortunately. You have it for life. You can become um, functioning and it can go into remission, but it is there for life. So this is something that a person is going to have to deal with for the rest of their entire life. So symptoms over time be can become worse, go into remission. Symptoms can be always present. It's kind of random how it happens. So it really just depends on the person, their medication and therapy, and the treatment plan that they're going through. So what is dissociative identity disorder? We've been over this topic a few times in our channel, so I'm not gonna go super in depth into what this is, but what is multiple personality disorder? Multiple personality disorder is dissociative identity disorder. They changed the name of the disorder because they realized it wasn't a personality disorder, it's a dissociative disorder. So that is why the name changed. Um, it's often called multiple personality disorder, split personality disorder, um, but its real name is dissociative identity disorder. What are some of the symptoms? Memory loss, so amnesia, we deal with this on a daily basis. I can't tell you what happened last week. If you're talking to me and telling me a, about a story that had happened, it could be 10 weeks ago or yesterday. I can't tell because I have so much amnesia. A sense of being detached from yourself or your emotions, so this is dissociation. It's almost like an out-of-body experience, and we dissociate to such a high level that we forget people, places, things. That's derealization and depersonalization as well. We can go into those topics later in a different video, and I'll link our What is DID video. That way you can get familiarized with some of the things that I'm saying. So, dissociation is a huge factor. A perception that people and things around you aren't real, like I just said. A blurred sense of identity you must have or others must have observed two or more separate identity states in order for you to qualify for having dissociative identity disorder. There has to be at least two identity states. How is it treated? So DID can only be treated in therapy. There is no magic medication that makes DID stop. There's no pill, there's no nothing that can change it. You have to treat it in therapy. And normally in therapy, it's treated one particular way. You get all of the parts, um, uh, get all of the parts or the alters to recognize one another. And then slowly integrate the personality back into one full functioning part. We personally don't want to do that, 
just because we don't know if Julie would be the dominant part when we all come together. And Julie's very afraid of getting lost. Um, I know Nick's main priority is to making sure that she's okay. And he doesn't want to do anything that could jeopardize her just not existing. <clears throat> I know we'd be all mixed together and she would be there, but I don't know how different of a person she would be if we all come together as one. So she likes the person that she is right now. And as for right now, we just want to stay a functioning system. So that is another way that you can treat the ID. You can help with the amnesic walls between altars. You can help open communication. You can learn to function together as an entire system instead of integrating into one. As you can see, these two illnesses are very different. I can go into detail about some of the things that I've experienced with psychosis, which is what schizophrenia deals with, and I can tell you about DID. So, when we first thought that we had schizophrenia, Julie was hallucinating constantly. She was seeing shadow people, monsters, all kinds of things. She was hearing voices constantly. She was hearing two different kinds of voices, ones outside of her head, auditory hallucinations, and ones inside of her head. They couldn't figure out what that was. Come to find out, that was her alters. But at the time, her doctor wrote it off as an anxiety tick. She has seen so many things, not all bad, not, but not all good for sure. She is only, she has a very strong sense of reality where she can tell if she's hallucinating. We see a lot of like patterns wiggle, um, walls breathing, um, the floor rolling. We see a lot of those kinds of things. Not so much anymore. Ever since we've kind of become a system and gained awareness of one another, she stopped hallucinating. But she used to hallucinate 24-7 even with medication. So she would deal with that, and we can go into detail about that in a bipolar video um, with some of the symptoms that we had when we were dealing with the, these bipolar episodes. Um, it's speculated that we might have schizoaffective, but uh, our doctor doesn't like to put damaging labels on us. And I'm like, well, you diagnosed us with DID, so I'm sure it's fine if you d diagnose us with schizoaffective. So, that is schizophrenia and what we have experienced that's close to schizophrenia. Now mind you, bipolar psychosis is different than schizophrenia psychosis because bipolar psychosis comes and goes. For us, it didn't, which is what makes us think that we might have schizoaffective, which is essentially schizophrenia and like bipolar into one. For people with bipolar one, usually psychosis only happens when they go into a very manic state. So that's the difference between those two. With DID, obviously you've seen our channel, you've seen the symptoms. We have memory loss, we dissociate, we have 11 different identity states. We have like 90% of our life that we cannot remember. So they are very different illnesses and they're not interchangeable. So I just wanted to clear this up because I know a lot of people don't realize the difference between schizophrenia and dissociative identity disorder. If you like this content, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon, do all the things. We really appreciate you here. Um, I will link our social media here. And as always, thank you so much for watching. We look forward to seeing you in the next one.